Hi everyone, welcome back. It's uh, Wednesday, tip of the day number 31. We're moving on. Thank you again for all of the useful and tr tremendously helpful comments that you've been leaving in the comment sections. I want to start today with uh, an account of an accident. 2018, April the 20th, a New Jersey driver entered the second level of a parking garage, began moving into a parking bay, when suddenly a car leapt forward and would not respond when the brake pedal was pushed. And then the driver pushed two feet on the brake pedal. Well, I got a picture of this, but two feet on the brake pedal. The car still wouldn't stop, smashed into a second car, and then eventually came to a grinding halt. Well, of course, the driver swore blind that the car simply accelerated on its own. After a court case and a lot of legal shenanigans, Tesla released the data to demonstrate that it was the driver who depressed the accelerator and not the brake, and that the accelerator went from zero to 100 almost instantaneously. In other words, consistent with a person thinking they were pressing hard on the brake, but of course, catastrophically, pressing on the accelerator. Now, how does Tesla managed to get all that information. How does Tesla know, for example, that a driver who crashed into a concrete barrier had five seconds and 150 meters of clear visibility and did nothing about the oncoming concrete barrier, or in reality, didn't notice it because he was doing something else? One of the comments in my um, comment section last night was by somebody who said that they firmly believed that that camera that I referred to above the rearview mirror, that camera is actually recording, but we don't have access to it. He cited a case where a person had an accident, but they were turning around and paying attention to the dog in the back seat, and Tesla cited that fact, which they couldn't have known unless they could have seen in the car. I don't directly know that case, and it could be that somewhere in the um, statement of fact, it was released that the driver had just turned around, but he was on autopilot. In any case, Tesla knows an awful lot about what is happening in your car when you have an accident. And the bottom line is simple. Don't lie about the accident. You will be found out. Don't lie about what you would like to have happened when in fact it was something completely different because Tesla has direct access to the data logs. And so what I want to talk about today is the EDR present in your Tesla, in your Model 3 specifically. EDR, Event Data Recorder. So the Event Data Recorder gathers up all of the information and the dynamics and the system information that occur at the time of a significant impact. So, for example, if the airbags deploy. Let me read to you the description in the manual. Remember that manual? We talked about it before. That's a page from it. Let me read you their description of the event data recorder. Model 3 is equipped with an event data recorder. The main purpose of an EDR is to record in certain crash or near crash-like situations such as an airbag deployment or hitting a road obstacle, data that will assist in understanding how a vehicle's systems performed. Listen, that's a euphemism. Not how a vehicle's systems performed, but how you inadvertently did the wrong things in your vehicle, causing it to perform the way that it does. The EDR is designed to record data related to the vehicle dynamics and its safety systems for a short period of time, typically 30 seconds or even less. The EDR in Model 3 is designed to record data such as, it does not say exclusively, it says such as, leaving open that there could be other data. By the way, I'm in full support of Tesla doing that. You know, a company like Tesla could be brought to its knees through crazy lawsuits that allege certain things, and if Tesla cannot defend themselves, they are liable for massive payouts. So good on you, Tesla, for collecting this data. It's frustrating when it goes against us, but here we go. Some of the data collected is 
how the various systems in your vehicle were operating at the time of the accident, whether or not the driver and the passenger safety belts were buckled or fastened, how far, if at all, the driver was depressing either the accelerator or the brake pedal, and how fast the vehicle was traveling at that time. And then it says, the data can help provide a better understanding of the circumstances in which the crashes and the injuries occurred. So the bottom line is this, you've got to believe that at all times, the electronic modules in your car are monitoring all of these systems, safety systems and otherwise, feeding that information into the EDR, Event Data Recorder, ready for use at a future time. Now apparently, if no accident occurs, that data is not permanent, it doesn't stay in the EDR, but if an accident occurs or any kind of collision, that data is permanently, at least until it's cleared again, it's inside the EDR. So how can I access that information? The answer, with great difficulty. I remember when I was rear-ended down in Oregon, and fortunately everything ended happily after that. But when that happened, I called Tessa and I said, listen, can you just give me the data? No, we cannot do that, unfortunately. Uh, upon presentation of a subpoena, we could do it, or if the police asked for it, we could do it, but we cannot just release it. So I said to them, but I believe that we have a recorder in the car, and I believe that this event has been recorded. How can I access that data? Well, there is a way. It comes down to purchasing the hardware needed and the cables needed to connect from a laptop or a PC or a basically a Windows computer, into the event data recorder, directly or indirectly, but to get into that, you need this equipment. Oh, good. Uh, well, what will that cost me? 40 bucks? Um, 50 bucks? 100 bucks? Try 1,000 bucks. We're talking US dollars. 1,000 bucks? Yeah, it comes from a company called the Crash Data Group. And if, in fact, you go onto the Tesla website and you look up how to access my EDR, they have a direct link to that company's website. I'm going to show you a short clip here. Bear in mind, this is from the Crash Data Group, so it's their promo on this piece of equipment. The EDR Retrieval Kit for Tesla Vehicles. This hardware kit is now available for anyone to download crash data from any Tesla Model X, Model S, or Model 3 vehicle. The EDR Retrieval Kit is all you need to purchase. Software and data translation services are provided free of charge through Tesla's website. That's right, free of charge. No additional training is required. Full documentation is provided by Tesla with step-by-step -step instructions on how to access and download the data. With the growing population of Tesla vehicles on the road and the introduction of the mass-produced Model 3, you will want to add EDR download capabilities of Tesla vehicles to your service offerings. The kit contains all of the genuine Tesla connection cables and additional hardware needed to access and download crash data from any Model X, Model S, or Model 3 Tesla vehicle. It also includes a custom hard shell case to keep your equipment protected and organized. The Crash Data Group EDR Retrieval Kit for Tesla Vehicles. Order yours today at CrashDataGroup.com. Now Tesla is very obliging about this. If you go onto the Tesla website, as I'm showing you here, you can simply download the exe file, the executable that will run this software once you've managed to connect physically using the cables and the box that is provided by Crash Data Group. It will download the data into your laptop. And then you would go onto the Tesla website and you would submit that data to receive an interpretation that is intelligible, that is legible and readable by normal human beings and mere mortals like ourselves. Who's going to do that? Name me one person who's going to go to the trouble of spending a thousand bucks downloading software, dismantling some of the car to get to the connector, and um, going through all of these hoops just to find out that there's nothing that's going to help them anyway. I'm not saying that Tesla is at fault here for not giving it to us. A company like Tesla absolutely needs to protect their back. They need to be able to have the data. Listen, people lie all the time. It's estimated that up to 20% of insurance
claims, car insurance claims, are either fraudulent, semi-fraudulent, or outright blatant fakes. So any car company needs to take measures to protect themselves from that. And that's basically what Tesla is doing. I hope this gives you a better understanding of what the event data recorder is all about. So uh, yeah, if you have questions, post them in the comments section down below. This is Wednesday's tip of the day. Thank you for all the support you've given to this channel. I'm very grateful for it. I'm grateful to those who use my referral code to get some free supercharging on their purchase of their new Tesla. I can't wait to hear from any of you guys, especially you guys who live in my vicinity, if you are purchasing a Model Y and you're about to take delivery. Let me know and I'll move heaven and earth if I can to get there and film the event and make it the center of one of our uploads. Until tomorrow, thank you again for watching and I'll see you then.